today we'll take Zwift iOS from the small screen to the big screen using an Apple AV adapter. So this video is specifically about the Lightning Digital AV adapter that's compatible with most iOS devices. So you'll need to purchase one of these devices. They're quite expensive. They are $75 Australian, $40 US, and 40 UK pounds. Why they're so expensive, I don't know, but inside these little things is quite a lot. Have a look at this photo here. There's a little computer inside. They actually have 256 meg of RAM in them as well. So there's a lot going on in here. It's not just a straight one-to-one -one screen mirror. We'll talk more on that in a sec. So grab yourself one of these, and I guess we just open it up. And that's as easy as that. Lightning adapter on one end, it has an HDMI output on the other, and also another lightning, so if you need to charge at the same time. So using one of these, it's just straight into the back of the iPhone or iOS device, like so. HDMI cable, and there we have it. HDMI output from an iOS device. So the meat of this video is more about understanding the quality of the video you're seeing as output and how it actually operates. Zwift at the moment is only doing screen mirroring. It is not using the big screen as an external device. So it's what you see on here is what you get up here. A site called iosres.com, I'll link below to that, explains fully the actual native resolutions you see on these devices. So there's a few catches with this. As you can see behind me here, I'm running Zwift iOS on the iPad Pro and to a 42 inch screen up here. What you're seeing is two big side black bars there. You can't get around that because the iPad is four by three resolution. That's the dimensions of the screen itself. And because it's only doing straight screen mirroring, what you see here is what you get up there. So that is a catch when you're using a high powered iPad Pro like this, you're thinking I want the full experience, you're gonna get that for now. In the future, if Zwift ever do use it as an external display, there may be an option there to have that as your main screen and this as your Zwift mobile link controller. We'll see where they go in the future with that. So at the moment with the iPad being 4x3 resolution, you will have the sidebars either side. I've also got Zwift over here running and it's also daytime over here. I don't quite get why there's two realities running at the same time. So I'm following the same rider here. So one's at night, one's at day. That confuses me as well. However, you can see there are two, two graphic systems here running quite well. That's an Alienware Alpha. Windows 10, probably a mid-range system now. It used to be top of the line. It's been well surpassed now. So more details on the screen resolutions and what you can expect to see. The iPhone itself, the iPhone 6, 7, 7 Plus, 6 Plus, etc., are all 16 by 9 screen resolution. So when you plug those in, they'll take up the full screen. So going from the iPhone 6 and 7 base models to the big screen, there is upscaling. So you will see a little bit of Difference in the graphic systems there, well, it fills the gaps with the pixels that don't exist on these things. Again, this is the screen mirroring mode. The 6 Plus and 7 Plus do native HD 1080, and they'll look quite nice on 16 by 9. The iPad here, as I mentioned before, it's 4 by 3, so you'll have the black bars, but the graphics come out quite well. So to get rid of the black bars, you can do some screen stretching or screen manipulation on the television settings at all. That's not really my thing, though. I like to have it one for one. And after a few minutes riding, you don't notice the black bars anyway. The screen on iOS devices are really, really high quality these days. The retina display is super accurate and quite forgiving because it's so small. We can't really pick the fine details or little errors we see. When you blow that up to the big screen though, it's not as forgiving, especially when you're going from a phone that then upscales you will see a little bit of blur, maybe a bit of pixelation as well. With the native HD on the 7 Plus and 6 Plus, that's less apparent. And on the iPad device as well, that's quite a high res screen, so it comes out quite nicely. The gameplay experience is exactly the same across any platform that you're on, be it the iPad native or to the big screen, PC to a big screen, iPhone and Mac, all exactly the same, assuming your peripherals are all hooked up and the signal's clear for those. So in summary today, to get your small screen iOS to big screen iOS, you'll need yourself a Lightning Digital AV adapter for the HDMI version, obviously a HDMI cable to plug it into, and you're good to go. There are a few catches though, remember, the iPad version, 4x3 screen, the iPhone 6 and 7 base models, do a little upscaling on the screen so you'll get a little bit of resolution difference there. The iPhone 6 Plus and 7 Plus are native HD and will look pretty good. In the near future, I'll grab myself an Apple TV and we'll go through the air sharing version of this as well, but for now, Cables are the way to go for me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.